up everybody Sven Diesel here we're gonna be tying up the poor man's sow bug so this is exactly the same as the heavy hitter but we're only using one tungsten bead and makes it a little bit easier to cast we've got a C12 in the vise this is a stealth hook in black it's a curved shank perfect for uh, sows and scuds and uh, we're gonna be using some uh, Semperfly wax thread this is ADOT and a tan color and I'm going with a, a green greenish color of a sow bug probably resembles more of scud colors but uh, I've had good luck with some olives as well as uh, my traditional pinkish gray so we'll go ahead and start our thread and just like the heavy hitter we're going to be uh, using some 3x tippet this is just some old stuff I had from a previous uh, couple years back I just use it for most of my ribbing now and we'll go ahead and tie in the four to six inch section, whatever is easiest for you, and just kind of keep that on the top of the shank and work our way down well into the bend past the barb. And uh, I like to go a little further than my mind makes me think I should stop, and uh, that way it gives us a nice little, a better profile and helps later when we're going to be using some of the resin. And we'll work our thread back up to the uh, eye. And for the uh, leg and bugginess of this fly, we're going to be using some ostrich hurl. This is in olive. And just match this to the color you're going for, um, tan or gray, black even. And you can see how brittle the tips are. And so you want to make sure you get some fibers that are a little bit long. And I usually just cut off a good inch of the tip because I don't want to be... Uh, moving on to the next uh, section of this fly where we're going to be adding it all the beads and have it break but I mean that's why I'm tying in for this size I'm tying in three um, fibers for smaller ones you could get away with two but I found one just isn't enough so usually two to four is the rule of thumb and we'll go ahead and get our, uh, our thread up to the eye and now we're going to be putting the beads on so this is called the poor man's because I went to the craft store and bought these packs of beads. They were on sale, $1.50 for each of them. I think that works out to be 0, .00 cents. Uh, it's like 0 .001 uh, per bead. And so this will drastically reduce the cost of the, uh, the, the sow bug. Uh, but I will be adding one tungsten bead. And so I'm going to still taper it with some smaller beads. I believe this is a 11 aught is how they classify it. This is a, a checks. Uh, glass bead and I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the smallest one on and then I'll step up to this is an 11 aught glass bead and they're in the same color and I'll just work my way and you can kind of judge as you work your way up how many you're going to need basically you want to fill the back of the shank and leave room for one bead that will give you enough room to play but we'll put another um, <clears throat> another one of these the same size in 11 aught and I'm liking where this is going and I'm kind of going to add a orange hot spot uh, on this one and so I'll add uh, one more uh, before I do my hot spot now for my my hot spot I'm actually going to be using a tungsten bead and that's my way to the fly and so I've got this this is an eighth ounce uh, tungsten bead I'm going to put it on with the smaller side facing the eye and we'll go ahead and get that on and we're about there so I'm going to go ahead and just add a smaller back to the uh, 11 aught to make sure that it has a nice taper and we don't have to use as much resin but it will give us a nice profile and so we'll go ahead and put that on test it and you can see once I lay it on the back of the shank I've got room for about one more bead I'll go ahead and do double wrap or triple wrap and yeah doubles good make sure it looks good and then we'll go ahead and pull this uh, tippet back over itself on the shank of the hook and I'll go ahead and tie that and then work my way down and as I secure that first bead I kind of pull it forward and do the same with the second and the third and then we're kind of getting our spacing that we want just making sure that these are on the top of the shank it makes it a little bit easier with the resin and then I'll do one wrap behind the last bead and at that point I'll just cut out this tippet and try to get it as close as you can without ruining the hurl and then we'll go ahead and do a few more wraps down there and then work our way back up. You can get as many wraps in between these as you want. We're going to be covering it with the hurl. And so not, not severely huge or necessary because it's going to be resin. And at this point I'll do a single whip finish. You could actually uh, um, do a regular whip finish. But it's just to hold my thread in place in case I bump it when palmering this. 
Now I like to do one or two wraps behind this last bead. You can see it's going to kind of go everywhere. I've got three strands here and just get uh, a couple wraps behind that first bead and then work my way up going just right directly through those gaps recreated with the thread. And as you get in this middle section, I kind of pull it to the back and then I'll do another one as I pull it towards the eye. And then this one I'll go towards the back as I go underneath the shank and then this one towards the front. You can actually do two or three wraps through each of these on the, I call this the main body, like right underneath the straight start, straight part of the shank. And then you're going to be starting to run out of material and this is why we use three. Um, otherwise, you know, we would have ran out halfway through. But just make sure you get up and do about one in front of the, uh, the front bead and then go ahead and uh, secure that um, with uh, some wraps behind and some wraps in front and just kind of make sure you get those fibers as many as you can not going over the bead and then I'll kind of wrap my thread over the eye and you want to uh, basically I'm going to slide my thread across the eye of the hook and do the same on the underneath portion and you just want to get as many of those fibers kind of back as you can it's kind of be tough but uh, it's doable and then we'll go ahead and uh, snip out those uh, tag ends and at this point uh, we are getting there and uh, you may want to uh, use your scissors to kind of cut out the uh, excess material but I've got a new trick here just take a bodkin and heat it up for about I don't know 10 seconds or so 15 maybe until you start to see the uh, tip glow and this is one I use solely for birding hair and other such things. And then I basically just run it down the beads to the bottom of the, uh, basically where the shank is of the hook. And as I do so, it basically gets all the fibers going down. And you just burned them off and cleaned it up. And we are ready to uh, do some resin. And let's just take a look at how those are. Brush any down that are stragglers. And that looks pretty good to me. I really like how this one's turning out. Now I guess I could have whip finished before I burn those, but um, I'll just whip finish now with just a uh, triple wrap whip finish and we'll snip our thread out. It's going to be resined and so this is going to be durable. So we are now to the arts and crafts time. I've got some uh, Semperfly. This is a, a no-tac uh, UV resin and uh, I really like how this is the good consistency for doing this it gives you plenty of room and time to uh, work with work it around and get it to the shape you want and it kind of holds it I guess you need, can have all the time in the world as long as it doesn't see the UV light or sunlight so um, basically I start at the top working my way down the side and you're gonna have some of this top resin seep down into the in between the beads which is what you want and we're just going to work our way down and make sure you don't get any resin on the uh, ostrich. And so that was why we burned the threads down to kind of our stopping point. Oh, whoops, I'm getting a little out of control here, but I can fix that. Just going to use the tip of this nozzle to work it around, and we're basically building the profile of what we want. And so you are the artist, and if it's a little bit shallow or not humped right due to the beads, just add a little bit more resin. That's the the trick. More is better. I'm joking. And then I always turn it underneath so that the resin kind of seeps back down and kind of forms smooth on the back of this. And man, this is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and do um, a little bit more um, just to show you how you can add a little bit more resin when you want. But actually, that looks pretty darn good on the top. So Let's uh, adjust it in our uh, vise so that we can get this uh, butt end or tail end of this sow bug. It's a little bit difficult to do because I don't want to get resin all over the vise. So I just do this second step and adjust it uh, like this so that I can just lay a single bead right there to the shank and then work it and kind of spread it onto the sides and making sure to get both sides and spreading it up onto the uh, part we just did. Now, if you don't spread it, you could see a line, but I don't think the fish are going to care. Just, you know, your likes on social media, but just spread it out uh, evenly the best you can. Use that tip, and then when you get it where you want it, cure it up. Man, look at that bead pop. That is going to be money. Let's check that out. Ooh, yeah, I like that. That looks like trout candy. 
So um, this is the poor man's version. Uh, I'm just calling it that because you're 23 cents versus a dollar 21 in just tungsten. So same look, just uh, this one should be castable and a little bit easier to fish. But thanks for watching. Um, use color combinations to match yours and fish it.